Hi friends, my name is Elliot, and this is Visual Code, focused on demystifying abstract concepts. Have you ever got stuck in a conundrum, fighting with Git, not understanding its error messages and trying to fix your project by running random Git commands copied from Stack Overflow? Many developers are comfortable with the basics of Git, but understanding Git in depth will help you elevate your development workflow. We will be talking about 6 advanced features of Git today. Git refs, branches and hit, Git stash, Git reset, Git revert, and Git ref lock. Let's begin with Git refs. Refs, short for references, are simply aliases for commits. They act as pointers to the tip of each branch in your Git repository. But what exactly is the difference between a ref and a commit? Well, a commit is a snapshot of your project state at a particular point in time. On the other hand, a ref is like a bookmark that points to the latest comic on a branch. Let's imagine this scenario. You are working your way through your project, creating branches along the way following best practices. You end up with three branches, namely main, feature 1, and feature 2. Under the hood, the concept of branches in Git is represented by refs. These refs are merely pointers to the latest commit of each branch. Simply put, each branch in Git is represented as a pointer to the latest commit of that branch. If we inspect the hidden .git folder within our project, we find a folder called refs. And within the ref folder is another folder called hits. This hit directory contains three files, which are the names of the branches in the project. These three files are plain text files, and we can inspect the contents through the cat command on the terminal. We see that their contents are exactly the commit hashes of the latest commits on the respective branches. Now, let's talk about branches and the mysterious hit. The hit, in all caps, is a special pointer in Git, representing your current location within your repository. It is like your eyes, it shows you which commit or which branch you are currently looking at. If the hit pointer is pointing to a ref, such as feature 2, it means that your current active branch is feature 2. This applies to all other refs, and these are branches within your project. Going back to the hidden.git folder, there's another text file simply named hit. If we inspect the contents of this file, we see that it simply contains to the reference to the feature 1 ref. This applies whenever we switch branches. The hit file will simply contain the ref to whichever branch we are checking out. The hit can only either point to a ref or a naked commit hash. If it points to a naked commit hash, Git will tell you that you have a detached hit, meaning that the hit is not pointed at the valid branch. This means that whatever changes and commits will not be applied to any branches. However, if the hit points to a proper ref, it represents your current active branch, and all the commits made will be made on that branch. To move your hit around manually, you can use the git checkout command. Next up, let's delve into the git stash feature. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're working on one branch, but suddenly need to switch to another branch without committing your changes? Well, git stash comes to the rescue. Picture this scenario. You're given a task to add a used effect code snippet to the current project. You think to yourself, hey, that's easy, and proceed to add your code to the file. However, you realize that you should have created a new feature branch to add your code instead of coding on the main branch. Using git stash, we can store your unstaged code safely. We can then check out a new branch following proper naming conventions for the new feature. Once we are on the new branch, we issue the command of git stash pop, which will take whatever's in the stash backpack and upload the code onto the current working area. Voila, we have just moved our changes from one branch to another in just three commands. Let's finish up by committing our changes and pushing the new branch up to the remote repository for our tech lead to review. Ah, git reset. It's a powerful command with three different modes, soft, mix, and hard. Git reset allows you to time travel within your project and go back to snapshots of your code. Let's take a look at the difference between the three modes. But before that, let's go back to the previous scenario of adding a feature to our code base. Let's visualize our different working areas within Git when making such a change. First, we add the code to our working file. Then, to stage the changes to be added to the next commit, we run git add, which will help us stage our changes to the staging area. Running git commit packages our stage changes from the staging area into a new commit and appends it to our new branch. Still following? Good. Now, let's see how we can reset our changes using the soft mode. By running git reset dash dash soft, we pass in the commit in which we want to reset to, basically telling git which snapshot of our code do we want to reset to. The hit caret one symbol means that we are trying to reset to one commit before our current hit. Simply put, we are trying to go back in time to our previous commit. Running the soft reset command, we see that the commit has been undone by git, but we can also observe that the repository has gone back to a state just before we ran our previous commit command. The changes has still been staged in the index. Notice that if we run git commit again, we return to the original state before the reset. Next up, let's take a look at the mix reset. Running the command will remove the commit from the branch as usual. However, note the difference this time. The changes that we made is no longer in the staging area, unlike the soft reset. To return to the original state, we first need to run git add before running the git commit. Lastly, we take a look at a hard reset. Running this command completely resets our repository to how it was like at that previous commit. All our changes has been thrown away, and it was as if we have time traveled back. But be careful when you do a hard reset, you may unintentionally lose changes. Let's now distinguish between git reset and git revert. While both commands revert changes, they do so in very different ways. Git reset erases commit from the commit 
commit history, which can be useful when you want to discard or reorganize commits. But it's important to be cautious as it can introduce complications if those commits have been pushed to a shared repository. Git revert creates a new commit that undoes the changes introduced by a specific commit. This means that the commit history remains intact, making a safer option for undoing changes. Finally, let's explore Git Revlog, a powerful tool to navigate your repository's history and even recover lost commits. The Git reference log is like a journal that tracks the movements of the hit, recording where it has traveled over time. It is incredibly useful for undoing complex operations or even recovering mistakenly deleted commits. It lists out the history of where your hit has traveled to. Let's take a look at the difference between these two notations within Git. Hit alias 1 represents the location of the hit one position ago, while hit caret 1 represents the first commit before the hit. We can use the commit shown in the git reflog command to show us where our hit has been traversed. This is especially useful when trying to reset a hard reset. We just need to find the commit hash before we did the hard reset. And that's a wrap for today's episode. We've covered git refs, branches, stashing, reset, revert. We hope this deep dive into advanced git concepts will empower you to make the most out of this remarkable tool. If you found this video helpful, your support by liking and subscribing to the channel will be much appreciated. Thank you so much.